Hello, my name is Allison Lukanich and I'm here an attorney at Basham Shaw. I wanted to share some information with you about the new public charge rule I'm sure you've been hearing about. First and foremost, it's going to be implemented um, on all USCIS cases starting October 15th, 2019. Now, when I say all USCIS cases, I mean family and employment-based cases. There are lots of humanitarian types of ways to apply um, to adjust status or for residency that have always been exempt from the public charge rules and will continue to be so. So if you have a U visa, uh, you're a refugee or asylee, um, you've had a T visa, you're a special immigrant juvenile or applying through VAWA, among others, you are automatically exempt from these requirements. So there's going to be more information that becomes available as we see this new program implemented and as we see how USCS is adjudicating these cases. But to speak generally on the public charge rule, there's always been a requirement that incoming immigrants to the United States applying for green cards don't become a public charge on uh, our government. They don't qualify for welfare benefits or depend on the government in any way. In the past, all that was required was an affidavit of support from their petitioner or a joint sponsor to demonstrate that that person at least earns enough money to be able to support them above the poverty guidelines. Now USCIS is outrolling you know, new regulations and new challenges to that. They basically want to see that the applicant themselves has never qualified for any sort of uh, welfare benefits, specifically that they haven't used 12 months of benefits in the last 36 months or three years. And they want to see how is this person going to be supporting themselves and um, providing for themselves once they're here as an immigrant. Again, we're not sure exactly how this is going to be implemented by USCS, how strict they're going to be with this. My personal recommendations, if you are about to petition someone or you're about to be petitioned as a beneficiary, look into getting private health insurance. Um, health insurance is a big one when someone is in an accident and they're uninsured, they are um, potentially draining the state's or federal government's resources um, and covering their medical expenses um, while they're in the emergency room having surgeries. So that's one big thing um, that you can do. Another, if you are retired and you have a U.S. citizen um, adult child petitioning you, Start pulling records together of how you support yourself through your pensions, retirement benefits, um, bank accounts, investments that you have, property ties that you own, basically the money that you're going to be living out in throughout your retirement it will be really important to show that you're not going to be depending on anyone because you've saved up that money and that money is there. Now, if you're still in the workforce and still working, you may want to get letters of support from your employer that show what your salary is, your level of education, what you're capable of earning here in the United States, and working alongside with your attorney to try to make those arguments and pull that information together. Keep an eye out on our website, um, on our blog, and, and here um, on our video page for more updates as they become available. Um, we know when this new rule is going into effect, but again, what we still don't know, what, what remains to be seen is how USCIS is going to be implementing it, what they're going to be requiring of applicants. So we will update you once we have that information, and please give us a call with any concerns you have. Thank you.